Hello guys, thank you for visiting the channel. For those of you that this is your first time, please uh, check out my other videos that I have. Uh, those that are returning, thank you for the support. This is the continuance of the F23 uh, rebuild for the Honda Accord engine. Today we're gonna be putting the head back onto the top. All right, when I first tore the engine down, one of the first things I did to make sure that I wasn't dealing with junk it was, there was, was that I checked to make sure that the surface of the block was flat where the head mates up, and I did the same thing on the head. Uh, I did not video that. I'm going to show you what I did now. They have precision tools to do this. They have a, what it is basically you'll put a straight edge across the top, and you're going to check the clearances between these parts points here, and then you're going to lay that straight edge again across like this. And then you're going to again check the clearances between each one. I don't personally own, I probably should, but I don't right now, a precision straight edge. I do have a good straight edge. I'm sure that there are people that will cry foul on this, but I'm pretty confident that the straight edge that I have is, is enough to do what we're going to do today. And I have my feeler gauge here set for three thousandths. All right, the first measurement that I'm going to make is across from the front to the back of the head, and I'm going to check each one of these points. I'm going to push that down. I'm going to take that 3,000 feeler gauge and make sure it cannot go under at any point. I've already done this. I know it doesn't, so there will be no surprises here for you guys. All right, and then after that, you're going to take that same straight edge. You're going to go across like this. And you're going to check these points here, 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 and here. I can check that one also. It's not as important. And I'm going to continue going up, checking those to make sure that my feeler gauge cannot make it underneath any one of the uh, surfaces when I press down with that straight edge. That's kind of close there. Not, not as tight as I would like it to be, but I'm not very concerned about it. And then finally here. All right, so I did the same thing with the cylinder head. I'm not going to show you that part. Uh, it's basically exactly what I just did, but it's going to be with the cylinder head. If you're building an engine for like this is going to be for a daily driver, uh, it's not going to be running boost or anything crazy on compression ratios. What I just did should be sufficient. You can go on Amazon, you can get you the straight edge that is the precision one rather than what I'm using here. If you want that peace of mind, and that should not be, a, I mean, you can go right ahead and do that. It should not be a problem for you. All right, um, I've already cleaned the top of the cylinder wall, the bottom of the head. You've seen those videos. This is ready to go. What I am going to do is I'm going to hit this with some brake clean since it's been sitting and wipe that down real good, and we'll come back with the head gasket. Alright guys, and here's the bottom of our cylinder head. Uh, if you remember from the other videos, this is clean, this is ready to go. I just hit it with some brake clean to make sure that anything that I may have touched or has been sitting over the you know, last week or two since I worked on this is cleaned off and ready to go. Anything on here you want to check, if, if it's any kind of discoloration, check it with your fingernail. So we have a place here that's kind of just a little bit discolored. I cannot feel that with my fingernail at all. So I'm going to call that ready to go, and we're going to move back over here to the uh, cylinder, or to the block as well. In all these places where there's any kind of you know change of color, I'm going to go across that with my fingernail, and again I can't feel that. It's just a color change. It's not anything that's raised up, and it should not interfere with the function of the of the head gasket when we get that torque down. So I'm going to get you back on the stand. We're going to put the head gasket down, and I'm going to show you what we're about. All right, guys, here I have my head. What happened was, is when I took this off, both of the locating dowels remained with the head. It's not a big deal. It's just when I put the gasket onto the block, it's going to be kind of trouble lining these up to go through right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the gasket onto the cylinder head first, and then we'll move everything over to the block all at one time. This is the gasket that came with the kit. It's a MLS or multi-layer steel. 
there's gasket material on the top and on the bottom and in between in the, in the middle is a layer of steel. On this end here, you can see it has a serial number. I want that to face up, so since the block is upside down, I'm going to flip that down like this. And also notice how I'm holding the gasket. I don't want to get my finger oils or anything on any of the mating surfaces, so I'm kind of like holding it in between there and I'm pressing out to keep that up from getting any kind of grease or anything on that. Okay, now I'm just going to set this over the top of the uh, locating dowels and show you where we're going to go from there. All right, that's ready to go. I'm going to pick that up and I'm going to transfer that over to the block now. Here we are. That is all ready to go. I'm going to find those locating dowels. All right, now that I have those dowels in, I'm going to give it a wiggle and make sure that's exactly where it's supposed to be. And we're ready to go ahead and thread the head bolts. All right, guys, one of the things that I did do and I suggest that you do, just go ahead and spend the money on it, is I bought brand new Honda Original head bolts for this car. The reason for that is, is these are called a, a torque to yield bolt. And what torque to yield bolts are for is they allow you to make a bolt that is smaller that you can add more torque to so that we can get more torque with less area. So you, you use a smaller bolt and get higher torque settings out of it. But the trick to that is, is that when you actually install this into the cylinder or the uh, engine for the first time and you go to torque this down, that bolt stretches. It's actually, once it once you torque it down the first time, it is longer than it was to begin with. This is an exaggeration I'm giving you here. So, but the whole point is, is that way you can get more torque out of a smaller bolt. Now, if you go to and use your old bolts that have already been torqued and, and stretched, then when you do the correct torque setting on it, there is a high likelihood that you're going to break that bolt. Spend the money. It's like 80 bucks. It's unfortunate, but it's, it's the right thing to do to make sure that you don't have a problem because getting this head to seal is probably one of the most important things you'll do in a, a rebuild like this. So I went ahead and spent the money. I've got the brand new torque to yield factory head bolts. I'm going to go ahead and install them. There are 10 of them. I'm not going to grease these or oil these. They're already greasy from the factory. Before I put this last one in, I will show you these are a 12 point. So you have to have the right socket in to put these back in correctly. I just double checked to make sure I was telling you the right thing. These are 14s. So if you just want just that one 12 point from the uh, AutoZone or wherever you're going to pick one up, it needs to be the 14 millimeter. That's the spec. All right, I've uh, used, I've started all of these by hand. Do not use any kind of tool to get those started. Or anyth anything that's like a ratchet or a uh, impact wrench. I've gotten all those started. If you have one that feels like it's a little bit tight, what I generally do is back it out a little bit, give it a little wiggle, and then go back down so I can get it to move with just my hand. If you booger one of those up, you're going to be in for a uh, world of hurt trying to get your um, threads for your head bolts fixed. All right, guys, I'm ready to torque these down. Um, this will work in a specific pattern. You start with the two that are in the middle, and then once you have these two, then you move to the next one over here. You skip all the way back to here, skip over to here, skip over to here, go to the front corner back corner, this corner, and this corner. That is the tightening pattern for the cylinder head on this particular engine. This is a three-stage torque. The first setting that we're going to go down to is get each one of these to 22 foot-pounds. 
After 22 foot pounds, we're going to do an additional 90 degrees, 90 degrees on all of them. Do a second 90 degree on all of them. And then finally, for the third time, a third 90 degree all the way around. So I'm going to start off with get the 22s down, and then we'll come back and we'll do the 90 degrees. When you're torquing things, you want to do it in one shot. You don't want to come a little bit and then stop, and then come a little bit more and stop, and then, then the thing clicks on you. You want to try to do it in one smooth motion. Right there. All right, I've got each one of those torqued down to 22 foot-pounds in the pattern that's supposed to be done in. Now I'm going to come back with my breaker bar, I'll set these at 90 degrees, and I'm going to pull this 90 degrees for each one in the same pattern I just did. All right, that's 22 plus 90. I have to go 90 again, and then 90 one more time. All right, guys, I finished that up. I'm not even gonna pretend like it's easy. To recap, we torque everything to 22, then it gets a 90 degrees, then it gets another 90 degrees, and then finally another 90 degrees. That's three total 90 degree turns after the 22. And they all have to be done in the order. 22, 22, 22, 22, like that. And then again, 90 degrees, 90 degrees, the same order. Come back a second time, 90 degrees, 90 degrees, the same order. And then finally a third time, 90 degrees, 90 degrees, until you get what should be your last one right here. If on, for some reason that you decide to use your old head bolts, Leave out the last 90 degrees. So it's 22, then 90, then 90, and stop right there. Don't go any further. If you break one of those bolts off, uh, you'll have to drill it out. You've got to fix the threads that you're probably going to mess up when you drill that out. And it's going to be a big pain in the butt for you. I suggest going to spend the extra money, go ahead and get the new head bolts so you don't have to worry about that. If you do do it and you only go to the 290s, you're probably going to be okay. But I would, I would think that if you don't do it the full, the, the three 90 degree turns, then in the future you could have a problem with your head wanting to lift up a little bit and then you will start blowing coolant or lose compression in one of the cylinders. All right, guys, that's going to be our stopping point right here. Uh, I figure just one video on getting the head installed correctly uh, would be enough information to digest at once. And also, this can be a standalone video for anybody that's trying to put a cylinder head back on top of the F23. So I'm not going to go back over, but just remember it's 22 plus 90 plus 90 plus 90. Three 90 degree turns after the 22 in that specific order has to be the zigzag pattern that I showed you. With all that being said, uh, if this is again, if this is your first visit to the channel, check out my other videos. Uh, my other visitors that have uh, been keeping up so far, I appreciate the interest in the series. Thank you very much. If you see anything that you think that you could have done better, that you might have done different, please leave me a comment down below. We'll uh, be glad to check that out and go over that. Uh, like the video if you think this is going to help you out in the future. With all that being said, thanks for the visit, and I'll check you guys out in the next one.